Where do YouTube? In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down my hundred thousand dollar stock portfolio. It's just crazy. Dude. If you haven't seen my last video regarding dollar cost averaging, I would definitely recommend checking out that video. I covered dollar cost averaging, you know, why buying at lower prices is typically a good thing, and why you should try to avoid social media at times when the market's pulling back 30%. Because if you guys were around social media all of last year, People kept saying the market was gonna go down even lower. You had another 50% fall of downside. People were, were saying to buy bonds and hold for 5% returns. But if you just dollar cost average in, had a good investment strategy, it's yielded some pretty good returns year to date. Is it possible the market goes down lower? It's 100% possible, but my investment strategy is never gonna change. I invest the same amount into the market regardless of where it is. The market's up 40% year to date. I'm still gonna invest the same amount into the market. I keep it consistent, and that's why when I get into my, my platform, M1 Finance, it makes it very easy to regulate and automate everything. So regardless where the market's at, even if it's down bad, I can set everything up, and then I don't have to look at it or keep anything in mind. And this video isn't to like flex on anybody, or like show off. I think, um, if you guys aren't aware, about six years ago, my net worth was pretty much zero dollars. And I've been able to grow this portfolio to over $100,000 in the course of six years. I started working a retail job right out of high school. Um, I, went th I went through college working part-time, just investing money slowing in the market. And then over time, of course, the portfolio grew larger and larger. I got more invested in trading. My income began to grow. And I've been able to invest lots of money into this portfolio. Of course, I have different you know, workplace 401ks. I have Roth IRAs. I have a SEP IRA that I invest lots of money into for um, for trading and other purposes, you know, tax purposes. But this is just my biggest um, taxable broker account. And this is my main focus on trying to grow this. So if I make some profits day trading, I just usually take the profits out. I set some aside for taxes and then, you know, set some aside to buy some fun stuff or buy some clothes or something. But then the rest of the money typically goes in this broker account. I just try to be consistent and just plan for my future. So hopefully by the time, you know, 40 maybe or somewhere down the lines, hopefully this account's, you know, nearing like a million dollars somehow, if that's possible. That's my goal. I plan to retire early, hopefully. So I'm just gonna keep going at it. But without further ado, let's just jump over to M1 Finance. I'll show you all the numbers and I'll show you the performance year to date and everything like that. So this is my M1 Finance account. And this is what we're looking like right now. So you can clearly see last June, this account was valued at about $60,000. If you guys weren't around last June, inflation hit like a 40 year high, nine point something percent. The market was hitting new lows and the account you know, just kept on uh, bleeding out over the course of last year. With dollar cost averaging, yes, I mean, we had this, we had the nice little rally last August, you know, account got back up to 76,000. And then into October, September CPI, market started pulling back hit another bottom at 60,000. And the interesting thing about dollar cost averaging is, you'll see, even though the market kept hitting new lows, you'll see, for example, right here, um, the market hit new lows in October, but the portfolio kind of flatlined and bottomed around $60,000. And so every time the market got any buyers into it, you know, mar the market started pushing back up. And, you know, mid-November, um, the portfolio went back up to highs. And then to start pulling back again because of dollar cost averaging and buying, you know, having a, a consistent investment strategy, the portfolio now formed a new bottom around 67,000. So just by putting money into the market each and every week or actually every day, which you guys will see, um, you're able to negate the downsides of the market. Yes, the market will pull back and will have its red days, but when you have a good start to the year like you are right now, that's when the dollar cost averaging really, really starts to come to fruition. And when all the hard work, you know, focusing on this portfolio, um, really starts to become evident and it wasn't a waste of time like people were telling me all last year so that's nice the year opened up we had that great push and then you'll see this big drop right here I mean, nvidia hit about like 250 dollars i sold about 17 14 000 worth of nvidia stock i had almost 100 shares i wrote it up from 120 dollars up, up to i'm still holding some like you see down here and now today june 13th the account has finally suppressed the hundred thousand dollar mark um, something that I've been striving for for quite some time. Just always been um, trying to get this portfolio up to this number, and now it's finally been achievable. Um, people say the first hundred thousand dollars in your portfolio is the hardest one, so hopefully it gets easier from here to get to two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, hopefully half a million soon. But then we'll just jump over to some stocks I'm holding, why I like them. Again, I would definitely recommend checking out the video of the long-term stocks I like. I was telling people I liked NVIDIA down there at lows at 120. I mentioned Microsoft at 220 and then Shopify, of course. Buying and holding, again, really profitable strategy. It's been working out extremely well. So let's just jump over to it. So again, NVIDIA has just been a really killer stock. 
Um, in the past year, it's up almost 126%. Of course, if I flip this a year to date, it's almost up 211%. Of course, like I said, this big drop right here in the portfolio, I sold lots of NVIDIA stock, and that's why right up here, the net cash flow is negative because I took out a decent chunk from NVIDIA. And I'm just put that back in the checking account. I'm um, just a dollar cost average over the course of you know the next year or whatever, however much money was allocated towards that. And of course, Microsoft, I think Microsoft is a pretty safe, quote unquote, safe stock to hold. Decent dividends, um, great company. It's been around for like almost 40 years now. Second largest company in the world, of course. I can go on and on about Microsoft, but I'm really liking this one. I'll probably trim some Microsoft eventually if it ever hits all time highs again. It's getting kind of overweight compared to the rest of my holdings, but I um, can't really complain too much. But now we'll jump into the individual pies. Um, that's something I really like about M1 Finance. You can have like your own mini ETF. So in the ETF section, I have an ETF full of ETFs. This is kind of like the backbone of my portfolio. Um, I take so many out on margin every now and then. So of course, if I'm fully levered in the individual stocks, the drawdown may be worse if I didn't have any, um, you know, big names like VTI or QQQ in there. Again, like I mentioned in my RRAs, I mainly just hold VTI and VUG, a technology fund. But in this one, um, a little bit more risky, you could say. So that's why it's mainly more composed of individual stocks versus ETFs. But this one, about 26,000 full in um, ETFs. I'm just the backbone. You know, this one, uh, consumer staples. I put a decent amount there, not too much. It's whatever, just to diversify slightly. I'm international fund, so everything including the internet, uh, everything, the international stock market. And of course, technology up, you know, 40% year to date. Ideally, I could have gone with something with a lower expense ratio. But I wasn't really thinking about it. I just didn't want to you know, tax loss harvest last year for whatever reason. So I just held on to QQQ, um, dollar cost average in. But that one's pretty boring. Let's just jump over to the, the tech faves where majority of the money has grown this year, to say the least. These are all the names I'm holding in this one. You can see this ETF I have started the year around 21,000. You can see if I zoom out even further, it's kind of been hovering around you know 20,000 for quite some time now. But going back to year to date, um, so these are all the stocks I'm holding in here. I have Tesla, AMD, Google, Apple, Amazon, Shopify, Adobe, Roblox, and CRM. Um, you can see everything's green so far year to date. I've just been buying the dip when everything was pulling back last year and you know, got a pretty good price on Adobe, up 50% on that one with the earnings coming up this week. So hopefully by the time this video is published, Adobe's continuing to go up and didn't tank off of earnings. And that should be nice. Um, Shopify, um, still just really a small allocation. I don't have too many shares of it. Kind of my target 5%. Um, it's a, it was up almost 100%, but kind of really doing nothing right now. So I'm fine with holding Shopify. I'm um, just kind of a more speculative pick. I didn't put too much money into it, but just enough so I could, again, see the rewards if Shopify goes up like it kind of has. But then all the other ones just kind of staples to any portfolio. Amazon, I'm kind of glad I didn't go fully uh, into Amazon. All the time, Amazon is still down about 13%. So still working back, working on getting back to the green on uh, Amazon and Google, but everything else still pretty bright green to say the least. And of course, AMD, I like semiconductors, can't really complain. Google in the AI space, and of course Tesla, been a money maker. I'm just clicking on Tesla really briefly. I'm just go to the one year chart. So just looking at the one year chart here in Tesla. So you can see this entire way down, um, my, the net cash flow was about $4,300. And the entire way down from September to December when it hit $100, I'm just continuing to put money into Tesla. And then in the course of like 60 days, Tesla returned almost 120%. It went from lows of $3,400 up to highs of $6,800. Then it pulled back again and again, again, continued the dollar cost average into Tesla. And then you can see just from April 25th in the last two months, Tesla alone has grown from $5,800 in my portfolio and has gone pretty vertical to now surpassing $11,000, which is pretty remarkable. Again, all-time return only up about like only up about 50% on Tesla. Um, net cash flow about $8,800. This is why you can't panic when you invest. You have to have the long time horizon and then just dollar cost average deploy capital when it makes sense. And as long as you're buying good companies, I think Tesla's a pretty good company. Again, personal opinion, uh, everywhere I go, at least up here in Seattle, I see at least like, 10, 20 Teslas a day. So Tesla is just like a part of my life now. I think it's a great company. So that's why I've been buying it and that's why I continue to hold it. Um, especially when you see Tesla down 60%, 80% from highs from $400 down to lows at $100. Just makes sense. You Sometimes you gotta take a little bit of risk. But that's pretty much my entire portfolio. And just some other things we can see pretty quickly. Again, when it comes to dollar cost averaging, um, you can see every single day here going back, this is just going back to May 10th. I try to put at least, you know, 50 something dollars in the market. 
Um, some days, you know, there's bigger sales, bigger buys. Like this day, I sold like a small VXX position, leveraged into different other names. Every single day, or for the most part, I try to invest at least $50, $25 in the stock market. Um, you can go to the next page. You can see um, some more buys here. It goes all the way back to the start of the year, which is all, I'm kind of thinking might be another good video. Um, investing like $25 in the stock market every single day and seeing how the returns are. Um, so far doing pretty well. Again, people always ask, how do you stay consistent with the long-term investing? Again, using a platform like M1 Finance, everything is automated, I have it connected, so it just withdraws money Monday through Friday, you know, $50, invest the rest without me having to do it. I don't have to think about it, it just does it all on its own. It balances the pies, you know, naturally, whatever makes sense. And if things get going bad, let's say the market hits new lows or something, um, I can just uninstall the app, don't look, about, don't look at M1 Finance. And in the background, I'll still be investing money into the market every single day. I'm um, just dollar cost averaging, just, just sticking to my investment strategy. And that's what's been working for me. And that's what's got me a return of nearly 62% year to date. It's working for me. Um, hopefully the market keeps going higher. Um, I'll still continue to keep on dollar cost averaging in no matter where the market is at. One thing I see, especially in the finance community, is people try to compare themselves to the other too much. Again, this video isn't to brag or to like flex or show off. Um, it's just kind of going to show that hard work over time pays off eventually. I've um, been working really hard to get to this point. Of course, it's, it's just a nice big hold number for the YouTube title, but it took you know almost six years to get to the point where this portfolio could even be at this mark. Um, but just looking at uh, an article by First Republic, the median net worth by age being less than 35 is only $14,000. And then as you get up, you know, 35 to 44 is $91,000. So again, you sometimes you see these you know traders or people in the finance space you know, who may be younger than you or you know, my age or 30 or something, and they have like a million dollars, they drive Lamborghinis. But you have to keep things in perspective if that's all the content you consume. And you want to watch people driving Lambos around. It may start to alter your perspective on how money works and how things typically go. Um, so regardless where you are, um, if, you're me, if your net worth is around you know, $14,000 and you're less than 35 years old, you're just, you know, you're doing about how the rest of America is doing. If you get above, you know, 92,000 by the time you're 35 to 44, you're doing better than lots of people in this age group. So try not to compare yourself to other people too much. Understand that people got to where they were by working hard, hopefully, and take some inspiration from it. So there, there's definitely different levels to the stock market. Lots of lots of wealthy people out here, lots of people doing really well. Try not to get overconsumed. Try not to compare yourself. Everyone's financial journey is their own journey. So no one's will be exactly the same and no one will be able to replicate your journey. So on that note, if you guys like this video, be sure to hit the like button and stay tuned to the next video. Thanks for watching.